Hello everyone, today we're going to be working a little bit more with Vertica. So in our previous video we got Vertica set up, we connected to Vertica using DB Visualizer, but when we had to look through some of the schemas and when we looked to try and find any tables we couldn't find any and that's because it's a brand new database, there's no data or no information in there so it's our job to go and create something. So in this video we're going to be going through creating a table, we're going to insert some data into that table and then we're going to query that table to see what data we can get back out and we're also going to create a schema that our tables can live in. So the first thing we'll do is just to continue on with our DB visualizer. I'm just going to expand that out and we want to go up here to go and write some SQL code. So if you're unfamiliar with SQL then if you go to the documentation or Docker Hub where we got our Vertica image you can see it gives a little uh, sample of how you can create a table and insert some data and call some data from that. Now we're not going to use this example today but you can you can use this example if you want or you can follow along with my example. Mine's going to be um, a little bit simpler um, just because the goal of this is to just give you an idea of how it all works together. So I'm going to go back to uh, DB Visualizer and the first thing we want to do is create a schema because a schema is going to be where we're going to create our tables. So again if we just uh, close this here, if we go to open up uh, schemas at the minute you can see we have this public one and then we have these other two but we would probably want to create our own schema if we're going to create tables. Now you could put tables in public um, and if you do, if you go to create a table by default it will be in the public uh, it will be in the, the public schema and I can show you that uh, later on as well. But first of all let's go and create a schema. So to create a schema we just simply say create a schema and then whatever our schema name is. So and it's usually good practice to have capital letters so for for create and for uh, uh, schema but it, it actually doesn't matter so uh, it's just sometimes you might see create and it would be like this so if you're wondering if there's a difference between having it uppercase like that or having it lowercase it, it, it doesn't and um, it doesn't matter if you have it uppercase or lowercase or a combination of both so then just say schema and now you can say whatever you want your schema to be called it could you know you could literally call your schema ABC but we're gonna call it something a little bit more practical I think YouTube schema is probably something that's a little bit more practical so let's maybe go with that so now once you've got your name we need to go and run this code so you can put a Everybody semi colon at the end if you want, but it's not actually needed uh, because we're going to be running these commands individually. If you were to run this command to create a schema and then you wanted to create another schema down below it, so you had a different name, you had maybe YouTube schema 2 or something like that, then you would need the semicolon for SQL to know, okay, this is one SQL statement, then when I see the semicolon I know to stop and run this and then run the next one but we don't need it uh, for this example so I'm just gonna go and hit run here and you can see that this comes up here and we get a, a message of success so we can see that uh, create schema uh, YouTube schema so that looks good so now let's check and we mightn't actually see this and we, we don't see this straight away if you look up here at schemas you don't actually see any you don't see the new schema that we've created so you probably need to go and refresh that so if we just go and hit refresh and expand that out again and expand schemas you'll see that the our new schema is here now if you go into 
that new schema and you look in tables um, or any other places like projections you'll not see anything in there because we haven't created anything yet so that's our next step let's create our table so to start this off we'll say create and then table and then this table needs a name and again I'm not going to make it fancy just going to call it something like YouTube table and once you've selected a name for your table if we just do it like this it will create it in the public schema so you actually need to have this and put that before your table name so it knows that you want to put it in a certain or a particular schema so if we were just to do this and we we can do it uh, we can do it twice so what we could do is this so we're just going to open it up using two round brackets and inside this we need to put uh, a few variables so we're just going to put uh, two so we're going to say maybe uh, an, an ID or something like that so an ID would just be a unique uh, identifier for us so we'll say an ID and we'll say that we want it to be an int and then we're going to put a comma and we're going to have a name uh, oh I guess that's name is a name is a keyword so I can't actually do that but I could do something like this uh, u underscore name for user um, so have that and then I need to select a, a type for that so if you're familiar with maybe C sharp or, or Java or something like that you'd be used to using strings but you wouldn't use strings in SQL uh, you'd use a varchar so that's just uh, var char and then you need to tell SQL how many characters it's going to be uh, a maximum amount so we could put in 32 like that and I think that looks good so I'm gonna run this and see what happens uh, now if, as I said before when I go to run this it'll create this in the public schema because we haven't uh, set it to into the YouTube schema so if I go and run this you can see that this has been created successfully now if we look in our newly created schema we don't see anything for tables if we went to public and we go into tables we can see that it's been created here but maybe that's not where we wanted it to be so we could go and create uh, that same table again but just by putting the schema name dot our table name in and we can run this again and now if we go I think we'll probably need to refresh this uh, what if I go into schemas into our newly created schema you can see now we have one here and we also have one here right so what we want to do now is we want to go and insert some data into that table right so the reason I made it a little bit shorter than the example that's given in the documentation um, is just for just for handiness so if I want to insert so insert into and then I'd select my table name which would be YouTube table but if I wanted to put it into that certain schema again I'd need to put the, the schema name here as well and just put a dot in between and now what we do we will have to determine what we want to put in there so to do this we'll just use our round brackets and we'll put in our values so again the first one here is an int so this could be I don't know maybe five it has to be some number on here uh, and then this is going to be a string or or as we call it in SQL a var car and this could be Ryan H and if I put in the word values uh, just just before the actual values that we want to put in and then I go and hit run it'll be 
it'll insert that into our table hopefully but we want to maybe check just to make sure that it has been inserted into our table so what we will do is we will select from that table so if we do select star so the star will take everything from that table and give it back to us and we just need to select where we want to get that from so we want to select it from our newly created schema and our newly created table it's actually given us a red squiggly uh, we need to put in the from keyword here uh, select everything from and let's try and run this and we can see that we get our output as 5 and or h for our username now if we wanted to just select one of those values like let's say we just want to select the username we'd switch out the star for the u underscore name we're going to select that and run and now you see we just see uh, ryan h and you could imagine that you wouldn't just have one of these values but you'd have many so you might have a different id here and you might have the name anna so let's go and run this and now that has inserted anna and if i go and do this exact same select command i should get ryan and anna back and i do and again if i was to take out this and replace this back with the star i should see eight as the id for hannah uh, select everything from what did i do wrong there um that looks that looks right okay i don't know what happened there it must have been uh I don't know, must have been just doing something funny, but anyway, I ran the same thing again, and you can see we get back uh, all the information. And you can put in, you know, many, many more records, and you can change this to add in other fields. So, for example, we're taking an ID and a name now. You could split that into a first name and a last name. You could put an age in there. You could put, um, you know, uh, your nationality or whatever other quantities you want for a, a user and i guess we're kind of going down the the route of this being like user data so we're collecting a name and we're talking about collecting uh nationality and date of birth and stuff like that so if you were to go and create this you wouldn't call the table name youtube table i just call it that just to tell you that it can be called whatever it doesn't matter but you would probably call this something like user table or users or you know customer or something like that depending on what you're using it for i hope you've learned something today thank you for watching and have a good day